So in this lesson, we're going to look at dealing with networking requests using the HTTP and NET modules. And this is where things get a little bit more interesting because we can start dealing with requests that have been sent from other Node.js programs, either on our local machine or even on other machines elsewhere on the internet. And we're not just restricted to using Node.js programs because other connections can be made from any other programming language or any other program that's already been written, as long as it communicates over the network in a standard way. So in this lesson, we'll look at two core Node modules, the HTTP module and the NET module. And we'll see how the HTTP module can be used to really quickly spin up a web server that you can serve HTML and other content from. But before we do that, we'll look at the lower level net module on how to actually create connections in a client and server environment. So I'm going to create a new file and just call it server. And as we've done with our other lessons previously, I'm going to import the net module and save it in a variable called net. So as the file name suggests, we're actually going to create a server in this file. So I'm going to store that into a variable. And the function we need to call from the net module is simply create server. And what this does is create an instance of the net module server and stores it into our variable name. So if we were to run this script at the moment, it wouldn't actually do anything because we need to tell the server what port to listen on. And we do this by calling a function on the server object that we've just created, which is listen. So to the listen function, I've just passed in an object that has a property of host and port and just set it as localhost and port 8080, which is usually a safe port to access because it doesn't require administrative access to actually bind to it. So let's run our server file now. And as you can see on the terminal, the program simply is sitting there waiting for connections. So before we write our client to actually access this server, we want to perform some sort of action when a client connects. And if you remember from the previous lesson where we were looking at events, the server object has an event called connection, which gets triggered when a new client connects. So if we set up an event listener for that, just to display some kind of message, just to let us know that a client has connected. So you can start to see how the content that we covered in the events lesson previously really comes into play when we're dealing with network connections because there are various different events that can occur either triggered by the client or the server. So if we were to rerun this server application at the moment, we wouldn't see anything because we've got no clients that are connecting. So let's create a new file called client.js and create a client inside there. So all we have in our client file is we're requiring the net module again. And from that net module, we can create a connection on a specific port which matches up with the server file that we've just created. So let's actually connect the client to the server. So the first thing I'm gonna do is just restart the node server. And what I'm going to do is just create a new terminal from here where we can run our client code. So you can see we can flip between the two windows to run different terminal commands. And of course, I'll just say node client to actually run the client.js file. So you can see we get no output on the client side, but if we flip back to the server tab that we have open, you can see a message has been logged to the console saying client connected, which if we go back to our server file, means that a connection event must have been triggered inside our server. So you might have noticed also inside of that event listener that we set up, we've got an object inside of the callback called client, and that is actually literally a reference to the client that's connected. So we can actually use that to send a message back to the client. So client.write will actually send that text back to the client, but we actually need to set up another event listener inside of the client to listen for any messages that are coming back from the server. So we do a similar thing that we did in the server and basically set up an event listener and the event we're listening for is data. And inside of the callback, we receive an argument, which is the actual data that's been sent from the server. So I've just called this variable data although you can call it anything that you like, and then we'll just log that out to the console. So let's restart our server. And if we go back to our tab with the client, you'll see we've actually got an error inside of here because the server connection has been terminated, so the client was disconnected. But if we run the client again, you can see straight away we've got a response from the server saying welcome to the server. So we know our client is receiving messages, and we know on the server side that our server is accepting connections. So it would be useful in our server if we kept track of all the clients that are connected so that we can send and broadcast messages to them whenever we need to. 
So here I've just set up a variable called connected clients and it's an array. So every time a connection is received, we'll push that client object that we receive into that array. And just to demonstrate how that might work, let's send out the current time every two seconds to those clients. So all I've done here is set up an interval that will fire every two seconds and gets the current time as an ISO string. And then we'll just write that out to all of the clients in our connected clients array. So let's rerun the server and let's connect a client. And you can see I get that initial welcome to the server message, but then I get the time posted back to me every two seconds. So that's just an example of something that you could do with reference to all of the clients that you've got connected. So the next thing we'll take a look at is making a simple web server using the HTTP module. So well established web server software is quite complex and can handle lots of different situations. But if you just want to serve a little bit of HTML content or some files over your local network or even over your company's network, you can easily set up a web server with Node.js. So let's create a new file and let's just call it web server. And let's import the HTTP module. So the HTTP module has got loads of functions and events built in, but we're just going to set up a simple server in a similar way that we did with the net module. So when we create our HTTP server, it takes two arguments in the callback. And the first one is the request that's being made to the server, and the second is the result that the server sends back to the client. So the first thing we'll want to do when we receive a connection is send a status code and a content type back to the client. And I probably should say that we're going to be using a web browser as the client. So we send these details back to the client using the write head function. So 200 is the status code. So if you know your HTTP status codes, 200 means good, as in there wasn't a problem with the request. And the second thing we pass to write head is an object which basically sets the content type to text stroke HTML. And this will just let the browser know that the response that's coming back is in HTML format. So with that said, let's actually send some HTML back to the client. And in this case, we'll just send a heading level one tag with hello world inside it. So that's all we need to do to create our HTTP server but if you remember from the previous example, we needed to actually set our server to listen on a particular port. So we need to do that with this as well. So let's do that down here. And I'm just passing the port and the address to the listen function as two separate arguments. So if we go and run our web server now, you can see the node program is sitting there listening. So let's head over to our web browser and actually see the result. So if I browse in Chrome to localhost with a port of 8080, which is the port that we specified in our web server, you can see we get that heading level one tag being displayed. So in a nutshell, that's how you'd use Node.js and the HTTP module to actually create your own web server and serve your own web application. Just before we finish, let's explore the request object that's passed into our create server function. And if we examine that in Visual Studio Code, You'll see there are lots of functions available and also properties, all to do with the request that's been sent to the server. So one particular thing that's useful is the URL, which is the path of the request that's been made to the server. So we could actually use that to make our web page a little bit more dynamic. So here if I save the value of request.url into a name variable and then just print that out in the result that's sent back to the client, we get something a bit like this. If in my address bar I say forward slash and then put my name, you can see the URL has been parsed into the string that's then sent back to the client. And of course we could always remove that forward slash by slicing the string slightly. So when we get the request URL, we could say slice one, just to remove the first character, which is the forward slash and restart the server again. And let's head back over to Chrome. And if I just refresh the page, you can see we're now getting a nicely formatted response from the server. So this is just the tip of the iceberg of building web applications with Node.js. And as you can see, dealing with things like parameters inside of your URL can be a bit fiddly. And that's why there are loads of different packages available that can help you with these sort of tasks. But whilst we're focusing on core modules, 
Hopefully this has given you a good introduction to working with client and servers and creating your own web server.